Oh, nice play. So now Brister and the Eagles get another chance. Already leading by seven. Blitz coming, he gets it away, and nearly intercepted the other side. Corey Sawyer, if he intercepts that ball, long gone for six the other way. This game might have been tied up if he comes down with this. As you see right here, Francis coming off the outside. Bobby Brister does a nice job putting the brakes on, stepping up, trying to hit Calvin Williams. And Corey Sawyer breaks it up. Right here you see James Francis getting there just as Bubby Brister throws the ball. But Brister doing a nice job of not dropping back all the way, but stepping up quickly to make that throw. Walker, the carry on a second and 10, takes it down to the 27. So it'll be third and long coming up. I want to remind you, on the Dakar is halftime. James and Terry will have all today's scores and highlights from around the league. Plus, we'll look at the year's most spectacular plays with a final edition of Choice Cuts. That's all coming up next on Dockers Halftime. Choice Cuts. We've seen a lot of USDA big choice cuts around the league yeah, this year. We sure have. As players are getting bigger and bigger. Third and eight. Brister slings it down to the 15 to Fred Barnett. And now he's going the other way. Still enough to get the first down. Barnett not sure to go north, south, east, west. That's the second time he's made that kind of move today. I believe he's been around long enough where he knows he's got to catch the ball, and the object is to get into the end zone. I mean, he makes a nice play here as we see Barnett on number 24, Roger Jones, makes a nice inside move, but now he's got to go vertical. He's got to go the opposite way. He loses a few yards. See Bubby Brister saying, okay, what are you doing here? Just throws his hands in disgust saying, hey, hey, Fred, the other way. Well, the Eagles having to spend a timeout. And they have one left here in the first half. Each team with a timeout left. Bubby Brister, uh, last week in his first start against the Giants, not bad numbers. 25 of 39, 182 yards, a 27-yard touchdown. But the costly interception in the fourth quarter, allowing the Giants to tie the game. Well, not only did he throw this interception last week, but as you look over the last six weeks, if they've lost the six games, that's been something that's haunted them, the, the interceptions, the mistakes. And he does have a good game, but late in the game when you need it, you threw that interception. First and 10 at the Bengals 17. Francis again coming around the corner. They dump it off to Joseph. And the clock continues to run. Down to 31 seconds left. Well, last time they took a timeout down in this part of the field, they came back and hit Joseph with the touchdown pass. Once again, they take a timeout and they try Well, they do hit him for a very short gain as they, the clock runs down here. Side out. And the reception made by Williams, and he's inside the five, has a first down. To me, that was a very smart move by a veteran football player, and Calvin Williams going against Corey Sawyer. He made the catch, and I believe Sawyer let up because he thought Williams was going to go out of bounds as we see the catch here, but he put the brakes on, and he got a few extra yards there. Little tricks of the trade that you learn mm -hmm. as you play in the NFL. And someday Corey Sawyer uh, will not be fooled by that again. But the upper hand right now for Calvin Williams. First and goal from the six. 13 seconds left. Short drop. Brister looking around. Now has to roll right and just throws it away. Brister has all kinds of time. I mean, he actually sat back there flat-footed and looked and looked until finally he got some pressure and he rolled just to get a better view then finally made a smart move by throwing it completely out of the end zone. Well, the Eagles with seven seconds left are going to send out Eddie Murray to try and tack on three points to what is a seven-point lead. Barker the holder and the kick is through. So Eddie Murray, his second field goal of the game. This one coming from 24 yards out. And Philadelphia behind 10-3 early in the second quarter. The 94-yard kickoff return touchdown by Walker tied the game. Touchdown pass Brister to Joseph gave him the lead. And now they're up 10 on the field goal by Murray.
Well, the Bengals stormed out in that first quarter. Uh, Jeff Blake at one time was three for four for 74 yards as they took an early lead. But like you said just a few minutes ago, they have cooled off. They haven't done a whole lot, but this Eagle football team has stepped it up. Well, they told you yesterday, Anthony, they really wanted to win this game for Rich Kotite. And that's what we heard as you look at Herschel Walker here. A guy just does it all. But uh, we heard the players say, you know, if he's not here next year, we want to win this football game for him. The team has not laid down in the six wins or six losses that they've had in a row. The team has played hard. The effort has been there. And they said it's not going to be any different today. We know we're out of the playoff race, but we want to play extremely hard for that guy right there. Saw so Freddie Barnett come up, give Kotite a big hug. Kotite has never had a losing season, and he doesn't plan on having one this year. A win today, and his team eight up, eight down. Off the hand of Adrian Hardy. Picks it up, takes a lick. And that will end the first half. So Cincinnati jumped out to an early lead. Anthony talking about Jeff Blake and Carl Pickens, a big reason why, but Philadelphia then got down to business. Their defense holding the Cincinnati offense down almost the entire second quarter. We're at halftime, 2010 Philadelphia. Stay tuned for the Dockers halftime with James and Terry after this message from your local Fox station. Well, we're back in Cincinnati. A 2010 Philadelphia lead at halftime and our MCI proof positive highlight, Herschel Walker. Well, the guy can do everything. There's no doubt about it. He's done it for nine years. Right here, you see him just taking it right up, hitting the seam. And once he gets past that first wave, nobody's going to catch him. He turns on the Jets and he's gone. Herschel Walker, 94 yards for a touchdown. And that started the spark. That gave him a spark. And they've been on a roll since then. Well, the man who's given Cincinnati a spark for 12 seasons, calling it quits after today, Tim Crumrine. They honored him at halftime. Kind of caught me off guard here, guys. It's, uh, it's been a fine 12 years, and nothing but great things to say all around. Uh, first of all, uh, someone's not here today that deserves a great big thank you. A pat on the back. And his name is Coach Paul Brown. And if Coach was here, he would say, that a boy, Tim. Made her through. Well, some of the words from Tim Crumry out of the Wisconsin area makes his home here now year-round. And I know a former teammate of yours, Anthony, and uh, this city will forever love number 69. There's no question about it. And the first thing you have to talk about, you know, when he got drafted, they talk about his lack of size, lack of speed. But he came in here with the desire and a passion for the game of football and played that not only for 12 years during the game, but for 12 years during every single practice, every snap he took. And the young guys on this football team have to take that away with them and play that way for the rest of their careers. And there have been a lot of stories that uh, Crum Rye will be returning in some capacity to the organization next year. So we're underway in the second half. Philadelphia receiving. And Vaughn Hebron still on his feet brings it out to the 38. A little extracurricular activity. Breaking loose down on the field. A Bengal down at the bottom of the pile is being dragged along. That looks like number 45, Adrian Hardy. We'll see after he's able to find a way to squirm out of there if he can. And it is Adrian Hardy. He wants to mix it up here in the final game of the season. Well, it's getting a little cooler, I think, as the day goes on. He just wants to warm up a little bit. But uh, Tim Crumry, getting back to him. He got off the little platform, they said. And here he is going off on his Harley right there. There's no question about it that he can handle that big thing. And yeah, they gave you a Mercedes-Benz, I believe, on your retirement after those yeah. 11 <laughs> promos. Right. Still parked downstairs, as a matter of fact. Here we go, first and 10 for the Eagles. Risker checking off, play clock down to two, and they get it away. Short drop. 
And fine coverage by Corey Sawyer, the intended receiver, Calvin Williams. Williams had a big first half. Five grabs, 116 yards. You see the numbers. Brister also a solid 30 minutes. Not a bad half. 16 to 24 for 225 yards, one touchdown. He's done a really good job leading this Eagle uh, offense. And you look at uh, Blake, not bad, but he started out hot. I mean, he was three for four at one point with seven, over 70 yards, but they really cooled off. Brewster on a second and ten. A little delay to Hebron, and he's across the 40, a short gain. It'll bring up third and about nine. Well, some of the numbers from the first half. Wow, look at the all-purpose yards for Philadelphia. That, of course, includes a 94-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Herschel Walker. Because you look at the other yards, the passing yards, a big difference, 221 to 117. But Herschel Walker has added to those all-purpose yards, and that's why the Eagles lead, 20 to 10. Third down and eight for Bubby Brister and the Philadelphia offense. in trouble sack by Big Daddy Dan Wilkinson the first pick in the 94 draft out of Ohio State and that'll be sack number four and a half how can a big guy like that get half a sack you see him right here going against Lester Holmes he starts the bull rush but then he gets some separation after that center tries to come over and help him but by that time Big Daddy Wilkinson's through there takes Bobby and just tosses him to the ground Short kick, Carl Pickens takes it from the 30. Crosses the 40, and it's out to the 43 before Mark Woodard makes his second special teams tackle today. 36-yard punt, 13-yard return. The Bengals, when we return, their first possession of the second half. Crowd here today, considering the Bengals 2 and 13 on the season, but certainly Tim Crumrise final game in a Bengal uniform having a great deal to do with that. You know, and Tim mentioned one thing, the last thing he mentioned were the Cincinnati fans, and I had a chance again to play 13 years here, and this is a tremendous sports city. And off to Derek Fenner, and he's out to the 45, saying that he lost the football. Philadelphia claiming. They're able to recover a fumble. Yes, they did. Eagles football, Michael Zordich, he's all over the field. We talked about him earlier, the eighth-year pro out of Penn State. How he comes up, he'll nail you. He'll hit you hard, and right there, he's right in the middle of the mix, forcing that fumble as the Eagles recover it. As we take a look at it right here, see the ball given to Derek Fenner. He gets off there from one defensive lineman, and then Zordich right there makes the initial hit but then as you can see him he continues to fight for the football and he comes up with it he just wrestled the ball away from Derek Finner Philadelphia ball at the Cincinnati 42 Bengals have turned it over now three times in the game and Brister to the air far side reception made by Fred Barnett good enough for another Philly first down to the Cincinnati 30 well, he's, he's enjoying the game. Fred Barnett, big smile. I think maybe he's just smiling because of Rod Jones didn't throw him to the ground after he made that reception. He just kind of went out of bounds. Right here you see Fred Barnett, top of your screen. Turns Rod Jones in a circle, turns him around, and makes a quick outside move. And that gives him a chance to be wide open and make that catch. Fred Barnett out of Arkansas State in his fifth year. Williams in motion, they'll hand it off to Hebron. He's to the 25, inside the 20, rumbling down to the 11. Vaughn Hebron, the second year back out of Virginia Tech. He bulked up last offseason, put on 15 additional pounds. And when he gets a chance to play, he'll do a good job. And who was right there leading the way for Vaughn Hebron was number 34, Herschel Walker. You see a nice block by Maurice Johnson. Herschel giving him a little help on James Francis, but then Vaughn Hebron does the rest, turning it upfield, stepping over Fernandez Vinson, avoiding the tackle. Big Keith Rucker, 19 yards downfield, finally able to make the stop. 
On the handoff to Walker, he's to the seven, and 